if I am not evolving, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Like period. If I'm not getting to the next level or changing, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm dying. So for me, it was like just the next thing to do. It wasn't about being courageous or brave. It was just like, this is what I have to do. What's up, my soul sister? Welcome to the Happy, Purposeful, and Free podcast, where we are all about going after our dreams, living aligned with our soul's purpose, and playing all out. I'm your guide, Katrina Lully, life and biz mentor, entrepreneur, mom of four, wife, and big kid at heart. This is where you will get the realest of the real from me and our special guests about living a life with passion, alignment, and what's true for you. We don't do the small talk around here. We are all about being who we are, sharing the tools, tips, all the behind the scenes, and inspiring stories that empower you to boldly pursue your life. I will share all the goods on life, business, and relationships so that you can start living your happy, purposeful, and free. Let's do this thing together. And welcome back to the Happy, Purposeful, and Free podcast. I'm your host, Katrina Lelly, and I am joined by an amazing guest today. I mean, I know all of my guests are really amazing, but I'm incredibly excited to have Lane Kennedy on today's show, um, somebody that I met recently through the beautiful social media platforms that are out there, and we've just connected so well. Lane is actually a, she's today's no-nonsense modern day calm maker. I just got like calmer reading that. Like I just, there's something about that that is so beautiful. She's a holistic practitioner, mindfulness teacher, DNA nerd, and host of Recover Like a Mother podcast. She has been a meditator for over two decades and teaches publicly and privately for government agencies and corporations in San Francisco and abroad. As a seeker, Lane has sought to harness the power of human capacity. She became a graduate of the Neuroscience Academy of Australia, was one of the first graduates of the Human Potential Institute, and a hormone cure practitioner. She really just does it all. Lane became certified in mindfulness-based stress reduction. Yes, please, to complement her decades-long meditation practice. She's also a certified recovery coach, two-time certified yoga nidra guide, breathwork facilitator and yin yoga teacher. Lane, oh my goodness. I, you're a one-stop shop and I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Katrina, it's good to be here. It's a pleasure and honor. Thank you for having me. You're so, so welcome. So to start us off, I would love to ask you, actually, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to go to the moon. Ooh. Yeah. I wanted to be an astronaut. That was the goal. I was like, that is where I want to go. I want to be out there. Uh, But that didn't happen. Uh, When I was about five, I really started to fall in love with fashion. And I would wear my mother's shoes and wear her clothes and just fashion, fashion. I wanted to go into fashion. I love it. That's so interesting. That is not what I would have, I don't know. I, that's not what I would have thought. Not because you're not fashionable or anything, but because it's not what you do today. You know, yeah. it's, it's way further off than that. Uh, I also want to know, what is one of the bravest things you've ever done? Given birth. Mm. Gotten yes. sober. I think those two things are neck and neck. Yeah. I would agree so, so much. One of my other guests, she said, being a mom, a sing, you know, and I was like, oh my God, that really is a brave thing. Yeah, it really is. It's courageous act to give birth, to be a mom, to show up every day Yeah, for your kids. Yeah. That takes courage. It takes courage. It takes perseverance. Yeah. A thousand, thousand percent. I love that so, so much. So I'm really curious, you, you're in this holistic practitioner space, you know, yoga, breath work, all of the things. 
How long have you been doing that? And what were you doing before you stepped into this space? So I modeled for many years. So I got into the fashion industry and I did that for many, many years. Uh, And then I had a lingerie company and did that. And then I got into the holistic health world. So I've been in the holistic space for um, 10, 12 years now, Hmm. practicing and coaching and helping and guiding. Yeah. Why the shift from the lingerie fashion world into this space? Uh, I was dying. Literally felt like I was dying because there was so much hustle in that world, the fashion world. There's the imagery. There is the push of being like every glossy magazine. And I was just tired of it. Like I had done it for so long. And when I called my agent and said, I'm moving on, she was like, okay, that's great. I'll always be here for you, but I think that's a great decision. Uh, I was just burned out. And when I stopped the lingerie company, I was the same thing. I mean, I was married to like my phone and I had a toddler. It's like, what am I doing? This is, I'm going to miss his childhood. So that was the shift. Wow how incredibly brave even there to make that kind of shift because it's completely different than what you do now. And it's completely different, like for you as a person yourself to shift from that Mm -hmm. hustle, that grind, that really probably masculine type of energy very much into what you do now. I'm sure it wasn't all like roses and it was the smoothest transition ever, but wow, that's incredible. Yeah. I feel very, very blessed, uh, to be able to do what I do, but I think in recovery, we have this opportunity for those people who are in recovery to change our lives at any moment. And so if I am not evolving, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like period. If I'm not getting to the next level or changing, I'm, I'm dying. I feel like I'm dying. So for me, it was like just the next thing to do. It wasn't about being courageous or brave. It was just like, this is what I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so good. And I'm curious to know a little bit more about that recovery process for you. What, what was happening in your life and what was that point where, okay, I need to get sober or else, or was that point, what was it like for you? Uh, so when I first got sober, I was modeling like crazy. I was drinking like crazy. I was in the Hollywood's who of who, um, it was totally normal. It was just a normal world for me. Right. Because, and, and everybody that I hung out with drank and used like me until the very end, until the very end, when I just had like one bartender who had tracks up her arms. Um, at the very end, it was, I had to, you know, pay people to do things for me, like clean out my cat box because I just couldn't do it. Um, I couldn't open my mail. Uh, one of my clients, this designer said, you need to go back in the dressing room and, um, just rest. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. She's like, no, you, you need to rest and then you need to go get in your car and go home. And I, it didn't even phase me that I had a problem, but the vodka stench was coming out of my pores, right? <laughs> she was just like, <laughs> yes. we're not going to be in close contact. No, you are going to go rest. Uh, and so that, and again, I didn't think I had a problem, but that wasn't even like the end of my drinking. The end of my drinking was that my partner uh, decided to stop drinking. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we'll just stop drinking. Like I, because it wasn't a thing. It wasn't an issue, but inside I felt at the very end, like my, my friend, my circle of friends had shrunk. Um, and I just couldn't do the basic things. I couldn't get my oil changed in my car. Like I could, it's like I was barely existing. 
And so getting sober for me uh, and putting down that drink, it just changed everything. Mm. Mm. I was suddenly able to like pay my bills on time. <laughs> Right. Like it seems so petty, but like I was able to make an appointment for the dentist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I hadn't. Um, yeah. So that was, it was life-changing for me. Yeah. Those that, I mean, that point of just like being able to pay your bills on time or make a dentist appointment, those things are impossible. Yeah. when we're in the midst of our addiction, right? They're those simple daily, like me, not, I, I didn't shower for days, yeah. you know, because it seemed like such a task and I didn't really go any, you know, just like those simple things, those, those pieces are so, so important. And, and we, they just go out the door and, and people don't it's that. basics of life. Yes. Become irrelevant. They, they, no, they don't even matter because they're not front of mind at all. Yeah. And how long have you been sober now? Uh, 24 years. I'll be 25 this year. That's amazing. That's so, so amazing. I mean, I just celebrated my 11th birthday and nobody actually ever says this to me, but it always goes through my mind that people are thinking, well, it's been 11 years. Why do you still celebrate it? Mm -hmm. Cause I, I'm not any different than the person that just walked in the door. And is, is spending their, their first 24 hours, mm-hmm. you know, I have a little more tools under my belt, but as far as whether or not that, that drink would affect me, I'm not any different, right? Like 11 years is still amazing. 11 years is amazing. 20, 25 years is freaking amazing. Yes, it is. That's awesome. I think, you know, anybody who chooses the sober path, uh, is looking for a spiritual solution. They want to live life differently. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I would actually, what came to me as you're speaking to is, you know, there's people get sober a lot of different ways. They, they, some of us go through a 12 step recovery program. We do a lot of work. We, we, we find a spiritual connection. We do that deep work, but some of the work that you do meditation, breath work, yoga, that's more, I think at a cellular level where recovery can seep into our cell, our cells. And I don't know that a lot of people go that deep with it. Like we do the work, we do the inner work. We, we, you know, make our amends, we take our inventory and all of that is incredibly important and definitely will help you stay sober. But even at 11 years sober myself in this last couple of years, I'm finding that there was some, there's some cell healing, DNA healing, like healing at that level to be done. Yes. Talk about your experience with that and what you Mm. have found. You said it so beautifully. It's like we're sober and that's enough for a long time. You just kind of slide through in your sobriety and, um, and it's enough because you're not tearing down the house anymore. Yeah. Right. You're not (laughs) throwing the kids out. You're not screaming, but what also happens is because it's a mental illness, we're still suffering from the crazy insider head. And so we have to learn tools on how to quiet that and how to rest the central nervous system. And when I had this awakening around, you know, my was like mm, nine, 10, 10, 11, 10, 11 years sober, you know, when I had that the lingerie company. And I was like, literally like, what is wrong with me? Right. I am going to mutual aid meetings. I am doing my book work. I am uh, meeting with people. I am doing everything that has been suggested, but the inside of my brain was just on fire. Mm -hmm. And so we have protocols and you know, 10, 10, even nine years ago, whatever, 10 years ago, it mindfulness wasn't really up as big as it is right now. I mean, we just were in this pandemic. So everybody's like, Oh, get me the app. Right. Um, but for me as someone in recovery, I needed to be able to find a way to quiet my body and my soul, my mind. And so I went, I started down, you know, the mindfulness path. Uh, I started the holistic coaching. Like I went down, I wanted to find out was 
wrong with me inside. Yeah. And what I found is that these issues, you know, from my childhood and from past, from past my mother's, from the ancestral stuff is like, there are issues that get stuck in the tissues and I had to find a way to work them out. And you do that at the DNA level. You do that when you get into a very still moment in meditation, you drop in and release. And you can't do that by just, you know, going to some mutual aid meetings. You're still going to be the jackass. You're still going to be, you're still going to be, um, you know, not the stellar person that you want to be until you release and let go of that stuff that has been embedded into the body. And a lot of people have these, you know, undiagnosed symptoms, but when I look at the DNA at somebody, it's like, well, did you ever think that you could have had Hashimoto's? Well, let, let's look at your DNA because right here in the DNA, it says, yeah. So when I get down to that, like really um, fine tuned cellular way. It's that that's when people can start healing. And that's what the last, you know, 14 years of my sobriety has been about is refining, you know, getting down inside and healing. So beautifully said. And I love, I I've heard that before, you know, our issues are in the tissues. And so getting down to that level and this is a layering process it's yes. peeling back the onion so doing the other work and then diving down deeper and i think you said it i mean people they they get sober and they're fine because they're not tearing down the houses they're content this is yeah. good enough yeah i'm so, fine yeah i'm fine so what was it if you can if you can pinpoint it or just kind of talk why was that not enough for you it wasn't enough for me, I didn't feel connected to my kid. Mm. I wanted to connect with him and I wasn't able to. I mean, I was literally screaming in the car with, you know, a kid, infant, not an infant, but, you know, a toddler in the back seat screaming like that behavior, not okay for me. And I know it happens, but that was the oh my gosh, I need to change some around. I need to do something because what I just did was not okay. That mm. was the moment. That's huge. And I know that there are a lot of mamas out there that can relate, whether they're sober, an alcoholic, an addict, whatever, or just a mom who's had some stuff mm -hmm. go on. Yeah. Yeah. Like getting out of the car because somebody's, you know, here in San Francisco, the streets are only so wide. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're behind somebody and, and they're not letting you go around and there's this traffic congestion, you're like, what you, what's going on here? Right. You just wait patiently. But me, I'm like honking, screaming, get out of my car, go up to the window. Right. Like there was a, a, a bubbling rage that was building and I didn't even know it. And this is what people don't talk about. They don't talk about what's underneath. A thousand percent. And I have found myself there too. I mean, I'm that mom. I've been that mom and I can still on some days be my mom, the be that mom, because I'm in that process of getting down into the tissues as well and learning that. And I know for me, it's like, there's a part of me who it goes against everything within me. My body, my mind does not want to do that slow down. It does not want to just be in that process, but change doesn't come from staying comfortable, right? Right. Change comes from that, that space where we're, we're choosing to move into Correct. and knowing like, okay, it's, and it's not always going to feel this way. I'm not always going to have this huge resistance. You know, that was something a sponsor of mine, a friend of mine had, sh had shared with me for a long time, because I've been that person in sobriety where I couldn't get out of bed for days and mm -hmm. weeks at a time. And she said, I promise you, it's not always going to be this way. And I held on to that so, so much. And I think people will do that. It's not going to be this way forever, right? We do that. We do that. We do that. We do that. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, or we don't 
I need a change. Yeah. Right. There can be years of depression. There can be years of rage. There can be years of anxiety. Yeah. In sobriety. And then, you know, perhaps somebody will pick up again and they'll think what happened? And they don't remember, Oh, I was depressed because they don't get down to the issues that are stuck inside the body. I think that there's this part, you know, especially when, when we know the darkness, like we do in Mm -hmm. addiction, Mm -hmm. we, there's kind of like this point where you're looking for, is there an end to this? Right. Do I, do I, is there, okay, do I get past this? And then I don't have to deal with it anymore, but it's a process. It's a lifelong process. And that's a big pill to swallow. Have you been that person? Like, okay, are we done yet? Are we done yet? <laughs> I think I was that person in year, like maybe like 15, mm. like 15 to 20 was like, what am I doing? What, like, am I done? Like, can I do something else? There was a big, huge shift. So I I have had that, but I'm not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't always so open or talking about your recovery like you do now. Correct. Why Why now? What happened for you? I had this real moment when the pandemic struck of ladies, of moms drinking and you know, it's a very scared place to be when you're drinking and you don't know what to do. And I thought, I'm just going to, I'm just going to raise my hand and say, I'm here to help. I'm just going to raise my hand and shout about my recovery. And it's been an amazing journey. Uh, at first I was really afraid of doing it, but I've gotten nothing but like, thank yous nothing but like, wow, this is amazing. I didn't know you were sober for that long. I didn't even know you were sober. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. You didn't even know I was sober. I had a client reach out to me and say, oh my God, I'm struggling. I didn't know that you were sober. And I'm like, oh my God, what? Like that's what I I think there's like the anonymity that uh, the 12 step program holds is that it it's sometimes maybe detrimental. And so now I am out there, you know, I am a recovery coach. I am, I am available to help others who seek the hand of recovery, who want to stop drinking and using. Have you ever found yourself, especially maybe even now that you're talking about it more, like you didn't want that label of just, okay, she's a sober mom. Like, is there, was there a a part of you who maybe didn't want to be identified just as that sober mom while being a sober mom is amazing, Mm -hmm. but were you ever wanting to kind of escape that part of your life? No, never. I am. That is the thing. That's one of the things I'm most proud of is being a sober mom. And my kid knows it. Like I applaud sober moms. Yeah. Mm. Never wanted to escape it. I can't imagine not being sober as a mother. Cannot even imagine it. Yeah. I love that you shared that because I think there are women out there who are suffering because they think there's something bad about being a sober mom because it doesn't fit in with today's society. The world Which right now totally sucks. Yeah. Right. It totally, I'm just saying it. It's totally messed up yep. that sobriety has a bad rap. When in, in reality, it is the most beautiful gift that you can give your child and yourself and everyone around you. Because the when I look at sobriety, it's like it's not even about alcohol or drinking. It's about a lifestyle. It's about the way that you live and move in the world, which is with grit and kindness and love and you've got a lot of perseverance and tenacity. It is this way to live. And the only thing that you do is you stop drinking. So beautifully shared. I love that because what people think sobriety is really isn't. It's defined as something different in the Bible than what American, whatever culture has defined it as. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly Mm -hmm. what you were, what you were sharing. 
Mm-hmm. But yes, you've got to put down the drink. You've got to, you've got to release that part of it, but there's so yeah. much more available. Yeah. The sky's the limit once you get sober. It truly, truly is. And in your bio, it says that you've sought to harness the power of human capacity. Yes. What does that mean for you? I don't think that we meet our potential. I don't think, I think everyone plays small. Everyone. Yeah. And it makes, it breaks my heart because if we all just stepped into our greatness, the world would be thriving. We wouldn't have global crisis. We wouldn't have fires everywhere. We wouldn't have political uh, agendas, right? If we all stepped into our capacity, the world would be so much different. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like I'm inside cheering. Like I want to scream from the rooftops. Listen to this woman right here. And it really, it just becomes about like how you set your mind. Yeah. And, and again, I'm maybe somebody's listening and they're thinking this is all rainbows and unicorns lane. I can't do that. I'm earning $5 an hour and I've got five kids and I, you know, like I understand that as well. Yeah. Right. But there is something about getting right or getting right size with your creator, whatever that is, whatever that is, you've been put on this beautiful earth for a reason, Mm -hmm. right? To expand your awareness and consciousness, which means to make the world a better place, to touch others' lives. Beautiful. Like there's that mic drop right there. Like I am that... Bring all the unicorns, bring all the rainbows, bring the magic, please bring all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm so right there with you. And the more that we do the work mm-hmm. and we embrace who we are and give ourselves grace and get and have, live with compassion for others and just love more, yeah. the more you can step into that. Whether you are that mom who has five kids making five dollars, it seems tough right now, but it's so important to start surrounding yourself with the people who are living that way. If that's what you want to do, yes. like start surrounding yourself with those people, with those women, mm-hmm. you know, raise your hand and speak up and be like, I need this. I need help. I want to move through this. I want to be here. So what are you doing? What kind of programs, things are you doing right now? Offering women, men, uh, you know, who are you working with? So I work with, men and women, predominantly women. Uh, but I always love when I get a man, I'm always like, Oh, just love you. Uh, (laughs) they're usually very sensitive souls. I just, I don't know. There's something really great about them, but I I predominantly work with women and mothers, uh, kind of resetting them, uh, depending on the stage of their life they're at. Uh, I have women that come to me about hormones. I have come to people come to me around, uh, aging, I have people come to me around motherhood and redefining their parenting because that's a really big topic of mindful parenting. So every, every person is different right now. Biggest program that I have really is my calm life. And that is about resetting the mother, the woman, so she can live more calmly and then she can be more effective with her kids, her partner, her clients, her colleagues, the dog, you know, like <laughs> wait, when we learn how to live that calm life, we can then represent ourselves differently. We have different interactions with people. So mm. that's like, I think that's my favorite program is my calm life program. Mm. I love that. And I know that you are just making such a huge difference in these people's lives. I get calm just speaking to you. I can literally feel my body relax just being in your space. Mm. You have that presence about you. Thank you. And I know it's making a huge, huge impact for others. Where can people find you? So you can find everything out about me at lanekennedy.com or over on the podcast, Recover Like a Mother. Definitely. Awesome. Definitely go in and listen to her podcast. It's awesome. Um, she just has a beautiful heart, beautiful soul. Is there anything else that you're feeling called to share before we wrap up today's episode? Just take things slow. 
there's nothing worth rushing for nothing. And unless the house is on fire, right? Unless there's an ambulance coming, everything else, take a breath, pause, pause again, and then react. Mm. So, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Lane, for coming on and sharing your light with the audience. And I know you're making a big, big impact for people. And I know that you loved this episode. So make sure you guys share it with your friends, share, re-listen to it for yourself and, you know, tag us on social media so we can let you know how much we appreciate you. I would love that. Thanks for having me on the show, Katrina. You're welcome. Until next time. so much for listening and if you loved this episode and know of someone else who has a powerful story and are doing big things please pass them on to me it would mean the world to me if you helped me get this message out to as many listeners as I can so please if you liked what you heard it goes a long way to take 60 seconds leave me a five-star review and share this episode with a girlfriend Don't forget to tag me on social media. And if that's not your thing, shoot me a DM because I would like to personally thank you for doing so. We are not meant to do this life alone. And I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. Until next time.